We're going to take a few minutes and discuss what a Chromebook is, what it isn't, how to function on it, and we're going to later in, in, in later videos uh, discuss the utilization of different features within the Chromebook. First and foremost, whenever you open up your Chromebook, you're going to be greeted with your login screen. Uh, if you have not created or logged in for the first time to your Chromebook, you're going to need to uh, add your account. It does need to be a Google or a branded Google account in order to access your Chromebook. Since a Chromebook is completely uh, web-based, it is going to require a Google application to, to function. So therefore, you're going to need a, a Gmail or a branded Gmail account. Um, when I say branded Gmail, that is going to be a, an email that is hosted by Google but is branded to your specific company or organization or school uh, so that you don't see that it is uh, a Gmail account but it still uses all the Gmail features and has Gmail applications. This right here is your desktop. This is when you're thinking about a standard machine such as a Windows based machine or a Mac. Um, your initial screen that you come to is your home screen, your desktop. Uh, this is what is the Google Chromebook desktop, the Chrome OS or Chromium uh, desktop. Uh, there is not a lot here. There are not icons that you see filling up the screen. You also notice that there is no start bar. Uh, there is no quick launch bar across the bottom. You're going to see a few things across the bottom. We can add some more later, uh, but for the time being, we're just going to look at some basic settings and then move on from there. So what you're going to notice is there is nothing here. Um, you're going to find on the left side is a search icon along with the Chrome web browser icon, Gmail, Google Search, Google Docs, and then YouTube, which is now part of the Google ecosystem. On the far right side, you're going to notice a time along with an account icon. You can manage multiple accounts. Even under one account, you can add multiple Gmail accounts or you can have each Gmail account have its own environment or its own world. So you can uh, have multiple accounts on one Chromebook or one Chromebox. Uh, Chromebox is just a Chromebook that you hook up to a, an, an external monitor with an external keyboard and mouse. It is a, it is a small, um, small form factor box that is designed to, to hook onto the back of a monitor or the back of a TV uh, and is not portable like a Chromebook would be portable. Portable in a Chromebook is more of a laptop style device. So inside here, if we will click on the time, you will notice that it will pop up a settings menu. You're going to see your, your email address will be at the top. Um, the name of this account is Chromebook Training for obvious reasons. You also see that you're, we are connected physically to an Ethernet. Uh, we would have the ability to connect via Wi-Fi if we wanted to, or we could actually turn the Wi-Fi completely off so it's not trying to search for a Wi-Fi signal. Uh, if you need it turned on, then you'll be able to click and turn it on, and the I here will tell you what the IP address is for that device. Um, if you don't need the Wi-Fi again, you can, you can turn it off and you can go into settings and, and turn it back on. Uh, we're not going to go to great detail on the, the Ethernet connection. Uh, and the Bluetooth, if your device is capable for Bluetooth features, you will be able to uh, enable or disable your Bluetooth device, manage it by Bluetoothing in keyboards or mice or headsets, microphones, and other devices that are connected via Bluetooth. Uh, you also notice here on mine that it is called TextMiss Snagit Extension. Uh, sharing your screen. That's what we're using to, to make this video and I could stop it here and it would stop the video. So we're going to leave it alone. You also see here that we have a volume up, volume down. Um, I know I just did that backwards, volume down, volume up. Um, so you can control the volume that it is kicking out. If you are on a Chromebook, you will have speakers built into it, a Chromebox. You will need external speakers hooked up. You'll also see an icon if you have headphones uh, plugged in or if you have a microphone plugged in, you will get an icon here showing you that it is plugged in. Uh, and the last thing we're going to, well, a few other things before we get into settings, you'll see the date and time, um, questions for help. This will actually shut down your machine and your shutdown and startup time is roughly about 8 to 10 seconds for a complete shutdown and a complete restart. 
Uh, if, it's, if it's a Chromebook coming out of hibernation where you're just closing the lid, closing the screen and opening it back up, you've got about a two to four second startup time. So there should not be a lot of lag. Uh, this one will be also to lock the machine without actually signing out of your account, which would leave all of your uh, browser tabs open so you could come back to it later, but lock it so that no one else could get access to it. In the settings, we're going to look at settings for a minute. Again, we're seeing some of the same things. Uh, you've got your Ethernet. We're connected via Ethernet here rather than Wi-Fi, but it is usually built in by default into both Chromeboxes and Chromebooks. Uh, allow proxies for shared networks. We can worry about that later. Just like in any other machine, we can go into the set wallpapers and we can click set wallpapers and choose a different wallpaper and it's going to, to also um, just pop up immediately. Surprise me, it's going to change every time that you log into your machine and you do have the ability to custom to add your own um, pictures if you so desire. When you close that, you'll notice it pops up the settings. You also see the settings menu down here in the bottom uh, left side on what would be referred to as your quick launch bar or as your start bar on a Windows machine. Here you can show the home button, what that is. That's for your browser window. If you're looking at a browser window without this checked, you would not actually see a home button to be able to click and go back to your home screen. If it's unchecked, there won't be anything there. If it is checked, you will see the home button. Uh, always show bookmark tabs. That's up to you. It can become cumbersome and cluttered. Uh, device battery, since we're on a Chrome box, we won't see the battery, but if you're on a Chrome book, when you clicked on battery, it would show you what's eating up the battery, how much time you have left. A typical Chromebook is going to have between seven and 10 hours of operating life on it. Uh, Chromebooks are, are come in two major categories. Um, you're going to have either a, a Tegra processor, which is more along the lines of tablets and, and smartphones, or a Intel processor, Celeron processor, which is more along the lines of a traditional a laptop or or net top box or a, a um, more cost efficient uh, Windows based desktop. The other things that you're going to see in here uh, mouse settings, keyboard settings, display settings, and your mouse speed, and those are how fast, and that's really more of a tweak to, to figure out what you want, want it to be. Uh, in your search, you can have it search in the Omnibox, and we'll discuss what an Omnibox is in just in, in a little bit. Um, well, let's go ahead and answer it now. In an Omnibox, when you're looking at a, a Chrome browser, the, where, you, where you type in your address across the top is called your Omnibox. The reason for that is because you can type any search uh, request into that box and push enter and it's going to search your uh, search engines for that information. So it's not just restricted to straight web addresses, but you can do searches within it within the Omnibox. And this is saying, do you want to use Google, Bing, Yahoo, AOL, or Ask for that, that uh, search engines for your Omnibox. Uh, show Google Now cards in the launcher. If you are an Android user, uh, you will know what Google cards are. The, the Google cards going to be um, directions to your house. It's going to be things that interest you. If you have been searching for things, Google is going to hold that on onto that and then send it back to you. Or if you have things that are being shipped to your house, then a Google Now Cards uh, will, will give you pertinent information that's relevant to you. Um, but you can have that turned off if you want to. It's not a big deal. Uh, enable OK Google to start a voice search. Again, if you're an Android user, um, then you would understand what uh, OK Google is. It's a feature somewhat similar to Cortana on the Windows phone or a Siri on an iPhone um, where you just speak a word saying OK Google and then it's going to wait for your command. Uh, if you're on a Chromebook this would be a might be a useful feature if you're on a Chromebox not so much unless you have a microphone always connected to your device. Uh, right down here we can also see you can change your login icon and then you can also add one for um, a custom one that you've downloaded, taken a picture of yourself or whatever. Requiring a password to wake from sleep. If, you, uh, if your device goes to sleep after a couple of minutes, you can require that a password is put in in order to regain access to it. 
um, this is a useful feature if you're going to have your device somewhere that other people may have access to it to make sure that a password is from sleep, especially if you have a Chromebook where you're just going to close the lid and walk away from it for a short time. Uh, if you have a password set and as soon as you open it, you're going to have to put the password back in in order to access it. However, all of your tabs would still be open. Uh, advanced sync settings and manage other users. Um, if you get to that point, we can go into it a little bit further, but uh, advanced sync settings, if you have multiple devices, multiple Chromebooks, or you're using a Windows or a Mac uh, computer, you can have the Chrome browser installed. Use the same email and password login for that Chrome browser, and everything that you do here will show up there, along with all the apps, your autofills, your bookmarks, extensions, histories, password settings, things. Uh, you can sync everything or sync nothing or choose what to sync. Uh, that's up to you on those. And then managing other users. If you have multiple users under one account, then you can be able to uh, manage those other users. Under advanced settings, you will see uh, time and date. Went too far here. Um, you'll see the time and date that you can set it to get the time, time zone automatically from your location. If you're traveling, you may want to turn this off so that you can keep your home time um, and date in place. Privacy content settings, just like any other browser, you can clear your browser settings if you want to. Um, do not send, track, send a do not track request to your browsing traffic like this one. Um, means that the request will be included in your browsing traffic. Any effect depends on whether the website responds to the request. It, it's where you're being tracked constantly now, anytime that you do anything online. Uh, this is one little feature that may help uh, that information from getting out. Uh, just clicking on uh, send a do not track request. It does not have to be honored by the people collecting it, but it, it may be. Um, the other things here, you can determine what you want on. Enabling Bluetooth, password and forms, you can turn on or off autofill forms. Some people like them. Some people see them as a security risk. That's up to you. Uh, enabling autofill forms uh, and saving your passwords. Remember, if you have this set to save your passwords, and then you also have it set to sync across your multiple devices, when you put a password into this device, and then go to your other device that's that's logged in with the same username and password uh, via Google or your Google branded account, then that password has been saved not on the machine itself but in your cloud storage uh, through Google. So so therefore uh, this may be something that you want to to turn off the autofill and the saving of passwords. Um, languages, if you want an input language other than English, you can you can put it in. Uh, downloads, where is it going to put it if you do download something, and we'll, we'll touch on this for just a second. One thing to remember that with a Chromebook or a Chromebox, there is limited storage in those devices. Uh, they're designed to run very lightweight operating systems with everything done in the cloud and saved on cloud storage, not necessarily on the device itself. So when you're looking at it, you're buying something or you're accessing something that has probably 16 or 32 gigs of internal storage, which sounds um, decent, but remember that most phones now come with 16 or 32, up to 128 gigs of storage on phones, uh, and most Windows-based and Mac based if they're not running on solid state drive, uh, they're running a terabyte of hard drive space uh, right out of the box. So when you're looking at 16 gigs, it's not a lot of storage space, but most of them you can put in an external SD card uh, that you can expand that storage space. So when you're looking at downloads and you've got a one or two gig download that you're doing, you're eating up a lot of your internal storage. So you want to you want to manage that well. Uh, Google Cloud Print if, if there's one thing that Google does not do very well, it is, it is printing. Um, it can be a headache if it's not set up properly and it's not understood properly. There are some printers that are set to Google Cloud Print. Uh, you can get any device to, any printer to work with Google Cloud Print as long as it's hooked up to a uh, printer or a computer that is not a Google-based computer that's a Windows-based or a Mac-based. Um, you can print just about any printer in the world from anywhere in the world, but it is a little bit, uh, can be a little daunting and task uh, setting up Google Cloud Print if it's not a printer that is designed for Google Cloud Print. On startup, continue where you left off, open up a new tab or open specific tab. Continue where you left off is the default setting. 
Um, here in the accessibilities, that's giving you the opportunities to figure out what you want, screen magnifier, um, sticky keys, contrast mode, large mouse cursor. Um, some people like this, they can see where the mouse is. It looks kind of funny to me, but um, you, can, you can enable those things by and, and just have it set. Notice nothing is checked by default. These last two things on the list are called power wash and reset settings. Reset settings, uh, that puts everything back all these settings, if you've gone through and messed with them and all of a sudden nothing's working right, you can click reset settings, it's going to send it back to the default settings, and then you can start tweaking things again if you want to. A power wash is the same thing as doing a complete factory reset on your phone. Uh, so a power wash is going to erase everything uh, in that account from this device. It won't necessarily erase it from the account, but it will erase it from this device, from this Chromebook or Chromebox. So you can do a power wash and it will it will wipe out everything and you would have to re-input your username and password in order to create a new account. So from there we will move on in future videos, we're going to move on to a few other things, but that's just the basic settings of, of how to use uh, the Chromebook and where you're going to find your settings.